Hello, Search here from the Backyard Driving Range. Well, we have a question that came in from Shirley Fraser. And Shirley says, Hi, Don. I should know the answer to this question, but I don't. Just what are the five rules of the peak performance golf swing? Thanks for your efforts to make us Sergeites better golfers. And now it's signed Bill Fraser, so I guess Bill was using his, his wife's email address when he sent this. Anyways, for... Bill or Shirley or both of them, and for all of you, she says, what are the five rules of the peak performance golf swing? I have sometimes call these five secrets. And when I call them secrets, I say, usually in the beginning, in the, in the, in the early part of a, uh, of a meeting a student, I say, they're secrets because right now you don't know what they are, but after they become secrets, they become rules that, that, that if you follow them and live by them, you'll be successful. All right, so rule number one. Golf is a game of angles, the fewer the better. Okay? I usually describe that as what I call the duck principle. If you had two mother ducks here, and one had two ducks behind her, one had 12 ducks behind her, which one is going to teach her ducks to walk to the lake in a straight line with the least amount of practice to learn it, and then the least amount of practice to remember it? The one teaching two ducks or 12? Without a doubt, it's two. It's easier for two to learn something, and then to not have to practice as much to remember it. So, Golf's a game of angles, the fewer the better. And the two biggest angles that I want to relate to are, number one, I always call the, the forward wrist, the left wrist or right-hander, is, is no wrist cock or wrist setting. Number one domino principle. When the first domino drops, they all fall. If you, if you lose that angle, you're in trouble. And probably just as importantly would be your forward knee. And we've all been taught to lift the foot and kick the knee in so you can make a bigger turn. We play with wide knees out with pressure because we want to maintain the knee angle because the knees are your levelers and stabilizers. If you move your knees too much, and most people, if you get into a golf posture and you look down at your left knee, most people have no more than about one inch of movement before that knee. Once you move any more than an inch, it's going to stop pulling your hip down. If this hip changes, it pulls your left hip down, your right leg goes up, your right hip and leg goes up, and everything else changes. So it's like you get your knees moving too much, you might as well be standing on a water bed trying to hit a golf ball. So. Once the whole key to successful golf, as far as angles go, start with good angles and basically keep them to the best you can. And so the number one would be up here, because if you're cocking your wrist, the club is falling down and it's cupping. We, come, we just start with a straight a flat wrist and we just keep it flat. And maintain the knees, and that's how you can keep your levelness to, to be hitting the golf ball so that you're not changing your hips and spine angles and, and, and everything else. So fewer angles the better, rule number one. Number two, number two is simply that it involves, well, now, we're getting, now we're getting into the swing, and it says, uh, two is called palms perpendicular to the ground throughout the swing. If you stand up straight and you swing your arms in front of your body, and why do you swing in front of your body? It's the only place you can swing them. They, you can't go through and you can't go behind. Your palms are perpendicular to the ground, they cross twice, 12 o'clock and six o'clock. So they're perpendicular to the ground, but when they, when they rotate the impact there, they both come to this point at impact, which is they're still perpendicular to the ground, but now they're perpendicular to you, your torso. And if you're dead parallel left with all your lines, toes, knees, hips, shoulders, and eyes, and, and your club face is, is perpendicular, uh, is in that same relationship as being of your palms, it'll now end up being, as it squares up at impact, guaranteed every time it'll be perpendicular to the aiming line, which means it's on, 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 square at impact to hit the ball solid and straight. Okay, so palms perpendicular to the ground throughout the swing. So when you're standing here and you're swinging like that, perpendicular to the ground means vertical. So that's why we go in to catch his mitten up the tree at 12 o'clock on both sides. Because that's gravity, the club is light, we're playing with a light club, versus where most people tell you to play with the heavy club, and we're staying in front of our body. So that's why we can get the club on the ball, on, 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 square and solid. Palms perpendicular to the ground throughout the swing, gravity is up and down, God created our arms, to function up and down, we can't swing through or behind. So, secret number two, on perpendicular ground throughout the swing. Secret number three, see, uh, rule number three. Here's my, t here's my toe line, there's my aiming line out there. You turn only to the toe line. So, once I reach the toe line, there's no more turn and it's all lift. And then from there I come straight down, hit the ball, and then with my forward arm, after I struck the ball and I'm going into the forward catcher's mitt, once my trailing arm, my back arm here, the right arm, reaches the line, it's straight up. So we never get behind the toe line. I've had, I've done plenty of, plenty of uh, 
seminars and stuff and, and clinics on golf courses and stuff and I bring a person out there and I say stand here and skip a ball to the target and I go right here and I grab their arm and I, and I, and I say okay and I, I, I put a club on it I gently turn their shoulders to, here and I, to their back to the target and I put the club here and I say why didn't you swing back there to toss the ball to that target and they usually say one of three things I, uh, I can't see the target it's not natural and I, could, I can't throw it at the target in fact I can throw it anywhere well, I say to him, if you can't throw a ball from way back here, what makes you think you can hit a golf ball from way back there, especially with a golf club that, that, that you're hitting with the head, which is way out here, and you can't even throw a ball, which is sitting right here in your hand, which is in your hand accurately. Did God give golfers a dispensation to play by their own set of rules? I don't think so. So just like skipping a rock, straight up, straight down, straight through. Up and down, gravity. All right, so we turn only to the toe line. This is rule number three. Number four, I originally had only three rules. Then when I finally figured out the concept of what's the problem of, 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 of people keeping their head down too much and hitting down, I, I, it became so important that I created rule number four, which states that, that we, we swing up to the tee finish. Most people have been taught that, I'll do a this view, that when you get up here, they want you to hit down on the ball. Hit down. I've had people say they were told to pound that ball in the ground. Just beat that ball in the ground. Well. I kind of, I've come to the conclusion, and I, a lot of people agree with me, that, that if you're up at the top of your backswing, even with a three-quarter swing, and you're going to try to hit down on that ball, it's going to, you're going to, without a doubt, move your upper body first, and because and, and and, hitting down is, is, got to, is going to make your arms pull the club down to the ball. But if you stand up here, if you get up here in the top of your backswing, and you try to swing up to the finish, you can't, you can't swing it up, it's going to keep your body still. And, and, and go up here. Just like when you skip a rock, if you, if you were to try to, you don't skip a rock by throwing it down, you skip a rock by basically throwing it out. And that's basically what we're doing from here. We're going to swing out and up. So I feel that uh, probably the worst golf tip there ever is for trying to hit a golf ball is keep your head down and especially hit down. Stand natural and swing up, okay, to the tee finish. And that, 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 I, I felt that was so important it became number four. And finally, I, I introduced the fifth one, which has nothing to do with the swing. It's got something to do with the mental activity or how you, how you think and handle yourself on a golf course. And, and again, it, it, I, I made this revelation. I felt it was so important I made it a rule. And, and, and this last rule was created probably about 10 years ago, and I haven't seen anything else to become more important to, put it, to make a sixth rule. But rule number five is, is when you hit a bad shot and you say to yourself, what did I do wrong? The answer is, who cares? Do the next one correctly. Do the next one right. Now, again, we're all, we're all in here. Well, uh, uh, I guess if I hit this shot, this happened or that happened, or, or well, let me try this or let me try that. And I mean, hey, even if you're on a practice range and you've got, you got a, 150 balls in a, in a range bucket here, how do you know that when you finally hit a good shot, that was really the right thing to do or was the right sequence of things to do? But when, when the way we lay out the peak performance golf swing of the setup determines the motion and everything, and everything is proved by physics and physiology of how our body is exactly designed to move and how it has to be in the right setup to move according to that design, to swing, to make a proper swing of on, 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 square and solid. You know the facts. That's why I, I spend so much time talking about the things of what the perfect setup is and what the swing has to be. Because until you get it in your mind, and your mind knows what has to happen and why it has to happen, it's not. Therefore, when it has all of that knowledge, then the mind can can trigger the right muscles to move at the right time, the right way, and in the right sequence. There's no such thing as muscle memory; it's mental memory. All right. So you have to know what you want to do. I don't ever. I, golf instruction to me is not telling somebody what to do. It's explaining to them what happens, why they have to do it, and then how to make it happen. So when they have that total understanding, they can do it. So now once you have the understanding, and that's why you listen to these dailies, that's why you buy the videos, that's why you get the, the peak performance manual, because all these things I've just described are in detail, detailed length. If you really want to get deep into it, and you don't have those things, but you want to get into these, why are these five reasons the way they are, these five, these five secrets and or rules, it's because they lay out the whole premise, and once you know the whole premise, number five comes in, what I do wrong? Who cares? Do it right. Get back to the right grip, the right setup, and then making the correct swing. That's all it is. 
once you know it, then just go ahead and do it. Okay? So the five, the five rules of the peak performance golf swing. Golf's a game of angles. The fewer the better. Palms perpendicular to the ground throughout the swing. Number three, you turn only to the toe line in the back swinging up and then hit through impact to the forward catches bit and up. So then rule number rule number four will be will be swing up to the T finish. Take anything to do with down out of the equation, swing up to the T finish. And finally, once we know all of these things and we understand the swing, rule number five is when you hit that bad shot or you get any doubts or questions, you don't go looking for you don't go looking for answers. You already know them. When you ask what I did wrong, are you searching? The answer is, who cares? Do the next swing right. Do the next setup and swing correctly. Okay? Five rules for peak performance. You get those down, and you, you'll be hitting it much more solid straight consistently and shooting those lower scores, which we all want to do. So just remember, play by the rules. USGA rules for playing the game, but the bigger and most important rules is the rules the way God created the world to turn. Physics, physiology, you play by those, which is what the, all, all the peak performance rules are, 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 are built on. And you play by those rules, and you'll definitely become the, uh, the player you want to be and start shooting those lowest scores. That's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.